Alpha. What's up guys? I'm Richard Degave and I'm really excited to be back with our episode 2 of our wildlife photography workshop. In this episode, we are going to be looking at individual sightings that I had while moving around Sabi Sabi Private Game Reserve. Now, Sabi Sabi Private Game Reserve used to be my home for the best part of six years. And I love the place. I know it infinitely well, but it was such a unique feeling being back there under the conditions of this quarantine lockdown and being the only vehicle out for the most part at any time on the reserve. So while out there, you're put in a situation where things are a little different. Normally I would have had a tracker on, on the front of the vehicle, now I was on my own. No guests, no tracker, just me and my cameras. It was spectacular. So off I went looking for different things. In this episode, we're going to be looking at two different lion sightings that I had during my time there, as well as two separate elephant sightings, each one of them bulls that were drinking at water holes. We're going to look at how I photographed Impala and thoughts on photographing Impala, as well as looking at photographs that I took of little bee eaters while I was out on the reserve. It was a spectacular time and every situation is unique so the idea behind this is to really get you guys thinking like i'm thinking some of the stuff we will discuss settings i will discuss where i am what i'm thinking why i change certain things and we will go through each of those situations please send any questions you have through social media either to my instagram account or my facebook account and um, it's richard.digavea for instagram and you'll find me under my name for Facebook. But some interaction here would be wonderful. If there are enough questions, we might even do an Instagram Live on all of these questions. So before we start, episode one was about camera basics. And camera basics are the key to everything. It's the starting point. So if you go look back in the Alpha Universe, you will see the camera basics tab and you will see that video running Please go have a watch of it. It'll give you a good idea of what I'm saying and what I'm dealing with as we're going through this. Also, if you want 10% off of your next Sony purchase, you can use the promo code WILDRICHARD02. WILDRICHARD02. Yes, I'm a wild one. And uh, that will give you a 10% cashback discount where you will buy your goods and you'll go to cashbacks.co.za and you will be able to claim back your 10% cashback off of that. But now, let's get into it. The first sighting was a crazy sighting that we had with lions. Now, you can imagine that being on the reserve and being so few vehicles out, it's difficult to find animals. So that morning, I just left one of the other vehicles. There are a few staff that were remained on the property for on the reserve for, for the purposes of social media and keeping things going and upkeep of the lodge. And they were out and driving, they'd found lions. So they called me and I rushed over to get in there. And it was an incredible sighting. So let's go have a listen to what I felt, how I did it, and the images that I took in that sighting. Right, so we just had a, a pride of lions called the Plains Pride, which was moving along and when I got in there, they were all static and lying down. My first point of positioning was trying to get low. And um, so judging by the terrain, which way they were looking, the sun was rising behind me. So we obviously wanted to keep that sunrise, that beautiful gold light hitting them. And then it was fortunate that where they were lying, they were on a slope. So I parked below them. And it's a very fortunate thing within private game reserves that we're able to do that. We're able to park lower than them. And I was then shooting and then one got up and started to move. And I had the 400 in my hands and I was shooting away, but it was a little bit too close. It was too tight as he was moving through. So my automatic response is to change to a body that has a bit of variable zoom. 
so I changed to the 100, 400 and did that. And then they started moving away from, from where they had been and they were walking down the hill towards the sunrise. And immediately it was, I knew that there was another road down the bottom. So it's all about getting in front of them, keeping a shallow depth of field. So shooting at F2.8 and F4 to keep it as shallow as possible. And then what I did was I was watching and looking for game paths. So where the game path was moving, very often animals will follow those game paths. I parked at the bottom of it, and as Strews nuts, the lionesses started walking straight down that same path. And then the young males started following the same path. And because of the shallow depth of field, what it's doing, first of all, is giving me enough shutter speed to freeze the action. I, it was still, the sun was still rising. So uh, I was at 2000 ISO, so relatively high, but, but still very good on these cameras. And then at F4 and shooting them portrait as they were walking down. Again, I had a lot of lens, so it, uh, 400 fixed doesn't give me a lot of options. So portrait will frame the thing and keep everything in. And as they were walking towards me, all the foreground was blurred, all the background was blurred, and you got these really, really powerful images from it. So now after that spectacular lion sighting, it was brief but powerful. We had a big male who came in and was moving and chasing this pride around. The pride was called the Plains Pride. And there was quite a bit of interaction going around. So you can see in the images that things were moving. The one female lioness was looking back over her shoulder and it was an incredible situation. Now moving on to the next situation, we're gonna look at some elephant. And I was cruising around the reserve on the early part, I think it was the first morning that I went out and it was getting quite hot. Even in winter, the temperatures still get to 25, 26 degrees in the afternoon. So it was, it was getting warm, it was approaching midday. And I found three bull elephants moving towards a water hole. So I parked myself at the bottom of the water hole to get as low as possible. And these were the shots and the, the commentary that came from it. All right, amazing. We've got some elephants here having a drink at a water hole. I've chosen 100, 400 for this, specifically because I wanna be able to get different, different angles, different ideas, so I can get wider, I can go fuller. So these three bull elephants have come in to have a little drink, so now I can zoom in. I mean, the light is not fantastic, but we'll see what we can get anyway. So I might actually consider doing black and white. So I'm gonna, see how these guys oh, no, we don't want that. so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to overexpose the photo quite severely and the reason is is because then I can create a really high contrast image which will bring out the power of the the black and white that we're Gotcha, this is really nice. So it's really blown out. It's actually quite overpowering when you look at it in camera. Um, but for the most part, it'll create a, a very beautiful image. Right, so we've had these elephants and they were on the other side, but this guy's come around to the correct side now and the light is much, much better on him. Um, it's a... Uh, it, it was a great opportunity to use the 400 mil, get a bit close, get shots around the trunk as the water's falling out. Shots of him putting his trunk in his mouth. Just really beautiful shots in general. Um, I had one walk past me just now, which was great. Hopefully that'll happen again. I'm just gonna sit down. Hopefully they, uh, you can see them all walking in the background and around there. We actually got such a cool reflection going on here in the water with the elephant on the far side there. And um, the water is crystal, crystal clear, getting a lot of the blue sky and the tree behind him in the background. And then just trying to do a portrait shot. And again, this is where having a, a, a fixed 400 just kills it. I, I picked up the fixed 400 to try and get the shot, but 
in the second part of it, what ended up happening was it was too much lens. So having the 100-400 now, absolutely perfect. It allowed me to have a bit of variation, get in a little bit closer, also back out a bit. Now these two are about to have a little coming together. Another great reflection here. So I'm just opening it up wide, really back to 100 mils. And I've got the two of them standing off against one another, both top and bottom. It is very cool, very nice. All right, so if you have a look at where I position myself to for the, for the photogra uh, photo photographing of these elephants, I actually went below the damn wall. So I got as low as possible to make the elephants bigger. Lower angle will make a big thing look bigger and it gets us down also at eye level with the trunk and the feet coming in. So it was quite a nice position to be in and the guys were cl quite clearly very relaxed with my positioning and everything and just what a cool sighting. Um, elephants are really, really difficult to photograph in general. So getting them doing something like drinking water or feeding and then getting a bit artistic. You don't always have to have the whole animal in the photo. You can also keep it at a bit smaller, tighter, just the trunk tip. Something like that might change uh, everything. Again, the light's a little harsh today, or right now it's uh, almost 12 o'clock already. So it's, it's harsh, it's difficult to photograph. And because of that harsh light, I've just decided that black and white would probably be the best route to go. But let's see what we come up with in post. So now let's talk about the most abundant antelope on the, on the planet. Impala are everywhere. We drive past them all the time because they are so common. And it is very difficult to create a unique photo of an animal that is so prevalent because everyone has tried it, everyone has taken them, and we, to be honest, start getting bored of these things. So what I'm gonna look at is an individual situation of how I photograph this specific Impala ram. Um, in the photo, you'll actually see an ox pecker sitting in its ear cleaning, cleaning the ear. But what I, what I will do afterwards is I'm going to run through a few other photos that I've taken previously, just to give you a different idea of how to change things up and create different images of a very common animal. Which is, um in this beautiful light, there's some wildebeest behind him, but he is just beautifully lit at the moment. The wildebeest are alarm calling at the moment, if you can hear that. So what I'm doing is getting nice and low and filming this, I mean, photographing this guy. I've dropped the exposure compensation slightly just to allow for the light and to darken the background and make him stand out from the background. And then I'm just concentrating on getting the right composition. So whichever way he's looking, whichever way he's looking, I'm going to compensate for. So if he looks right, I'm going to leave space on the right hand side of the image so that your eye goes from his face and says, what is he looking at? And then also, again, if he turns to look the other way, another massive part of the whole thing. Right. So now let's look at a few other images where we can start using our imaginations and start creating different images of Impala. So obviously, I'm gonna start with a reflection shot that I took at a different reserve called Mashatu. And in this image, you can see how we've got this beautiful reflection of this Impala drinking water. And it creates a unique feel because you've got the animal doing something. With common animals and things that are more seen and more photographed, you have to try and get a unique activity. What is it doing? What is it thinking? Great times is drinking, feeding on something specific. If they see a predator, it's great because they're at attention, they stood up, they're doing their thing. And then light. Light plays a huge role in everything. So consider light. In the next two images, what I want you to look at is the light. This first one, we have 
light filtering through dust as the impala are feeding under what is called the nyala berry tree and the dust is filtered up and the sunlight is the early morning light is being filtered through that dust creating this beautiful haze and it gives you a different feel and appearance of how the animal looks so whether the animal is the same as everything else the situation is different so we have to consider the situation and in this image i underexposed by about two stops to get it to the point that you have this darkness in the background and have this filtered light coming through. In this next image, what we have is a herd of impala. This was shot at um, Singita in the Savi Sands. And it was a beautiful morning in January. There were clouds out and the sun was filtering through. So you had this beautiful golden light, impala feeding in the green grass. And you have these contrasts of colors and and light and beauty. So when we're dealing with animals that you are very used to seeing, don't look at the animal, look at its situation. An image is created by the situation you put it in and the story you portray it in. If we're just shooting portrait shots of things faces, you are never gonna have a unique photo. So always look at trying to open it up, go wide and capture a scene, capture the beauty of a moment because these animals are really beautiful. And with the right attention and care, you can really get something great out of it. So let's move on now from Impala to the beautiful little bee eater. It's a tiny little bird that numbers around 800 million animals or, or birds within the continent of Africa. That is a huge amount of birds. Now, before we start photographing, let's do some basic, basic mathematics. If you consider one bee eater, eating 10 insects an hour for 10 hours a day. That means that the 800 million birds or little bee eaters are eating over 80 billion insects in a day. One bird species eating that amount of insects. Now, let's talk about the photography of it. These are beautiful birds. They stand out on their own. Bright yellow, green, very pretty, and a beautiful red eye. So let's see how I get on with photographing this little guy. Right, so I've got a little bee eater here. It's a beautiful little guy. And he's just chilling in the sun. And what the 600 does is it just creates a very unique shot. One, because it's a uh, such a long lens, it means we can get closer into the birds and get some great detail out of them. Um, and secondly, it gives this great background blur. So the, the background's not too far away, but I get some really beautiful clarity at the back end of it just because of that, uh, because of the length of the lens and it being F4. So that really helps. Um, and again, I'm using the tracking, AF tracking, which allows me to lock on and then recompose as I need to. Ideally, it's probably not easiest to shoot um, freehand with the 600, but what I've done is I've actually put my knee up and I'm resting on my knee and on my eye, which gives me an incredible amount of stability. And obviously holding it to my eye will make a, a big difference and gives me three points of, of contact. My right elbow is tucked right in, my left elbow on here, and my eye being the third part. And then the in-body image stabilization and the stabilization throughout the lens all work together to help me to hold this still, which is a very important part of bird photography is obviously keeping things still. The other part of what we were looking for with that little bee eater is the eye. And birds with very colorful eyes are very pretty to look at. And if you can get their heads turned just enough to show the glint of the eye, it'll get the color. And the little bee eater's got a red, red eye. And getting that in focus and, and going is such a beautiful part of that bird. It really draws the attention. And also with the sun in the position that it's in now, you get a good glint of sunlight off the eye too. Right, so there's a herd of elephants heading towards a waterhole close by. 
Um, we're going to make our way there and see what we can get from that side. The light is again a bit harsh. It's almost midday now. It's 11:30. Um, so we'll be looking more at black and white. And sometimes it's not just about the photograph. Sometimes it's just about enjoying the moment with these creatures. So let's go see what we can see. So we've got two elephant bulls, elephant bulls drinking in front here. Um, I've got the 600 mil on, so again, just trying to get tight shots of these guys drinking. I'm focusing on the one on the right, specifically because he's got the best distance in terms of background to, to him, so I'll blur him better, and that'll give me a more accurate shot. And I'm just locking focus around the eye. We're at F4, 1250th of a second. Because of the low winter sun, it also still gives us a bit of light coming across rather than just straight down, even though it is midday effectively now. So as these two elephant bulls decided they'd finished drinking and they started moving off, there's always a, a bit of playfulness and seriousness within male elephants. They're always trying to see who's more dominant and this is going to play out in the long run. So these two bulls started sparring up, putting their trunks on each other's heads and feeling each other out in order to see who was more dominant and just keep those social bonds going. These two will probably spend a good couple of years together until they are big enough to start mating when they will start moving off on their own. So what I was concentrating on here was trying to get tight up on the two faces get that interaction. I don't need the bodies because the bodies aren't saying a lot in these situations. I want it tight up because the trunks, the tusks, the faces together give you a lot more story, background story to what is happening. And I was using the 600 mil here, shooting at about 2000th of a second and just keeping things fast and aperture at F4 with a 600 mil to keep it as shallow as possible so that I could separate subject from background to create a nice canvas on which to paint this picture. All right, so we had beautiful elephants. Now let's talk about a sighting I had of lions. The lions I'd been following that morning, I got stuck through crazy bush. They were moving through this insane stuff and it's very difficult to sort of navigate your way without breaking a vehicle and stay far enough away from the animals to not disturb them doing their thing. But I did my best and eventually lost them. And it was late in the morning. I went back to the lodge, did what I needed to do. And then that afternoon came back up to track them. And tracking is an amazing experience because what you're doing is you're effectively trying to figure out where and what is going on. Now, when I lived on the reserve, it was a very different situation. It was a beautiful situation where you sort of knew the animals and had a general idea of what their behavior is like, where they move, where they like to sit. And it, it seems weird, but all these animals have habits just like we would have habits. So it was very difficult starting off from a point of not knowing those basic, that basic bit of information. But the one thing I had was the last position that I'd left them and I'd lost them. So what I did was I moved down the road, found some tracks, started tracking out the vehicle, walk, 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 found new tracks, get in the vehicle, keep going around and you keep moving, trying to move ahead to each road point to see if there's a crossing. And eventually I got out on foot, took a bit of a walk and there they were lying in the road. It was a great sighting, but a very lazy sighting. And patience was required in order to get a few shots. So let's talk through this and see how I went with these lines. All right, what's up guys? We managed to track and find the lions and they're sitting just over here in front of me on the road. Um, I've parked in a position where I'm really low down so that I'm looking up on them. They're pretty relaxed now and will be for a while. And there was a lot of yawning going on, which is often a sign that they're gonna get moving. And when they yawn, they generally yawn in threes. So the weather's changed quite a bit now. We've opened up 
the lights opened up a bit there's a bit of sunshine coming through so what we're doing is we've just got a meter for that um, my ISO is down at 400 and I'm at f4 just to allow a little bit of depth to get from front to back and because of the light being so good at the moment we've got 2500 of a second which is great so if something yawns something happens it's going to be spot on the money we are spot on the money so it's working like a charm so you got to watch out for yawns for any sort of movement that they might do that will bring things up like i said yawns every three do it three times licking grooming yawning these are all important parts of things now she's trying to chase some some flies that are irritating her so she might get up and move her there she goes and the key to this whole thing is patience it's all about being patient waiting for the moments that are going to give us the best shots and not being in a hurry to get from one place to another unreal what a, what a feeling it is to track and find lions and there's something really spiritual just about being out there and finding the tracks and trying to think like a lion and find the last track and see where they're going and then understanding where they could head to what their motions would be right so what we've got to look out for here they lay off to the side in the longer grass and what I'm looking for is moments where the heads are up looking um, just now there was a, a motion in the bush and a, like a Franklin moving through the grass all the heads came up and came to attention you want that attention you want that look and it's just nice to have it just sticking out the top of the grass because what you end up with is this really powerful look of strength and hunter and exactly what a lion portrays um, or what I would like a lion to portray remember when you are taking any photos you're taking them for yourself but the idea is is when you're sharing them that other people get the story uh, or the narrative which you're trying to put across the picture says a thousand words unless you choose not to put any words to it if it's just shoot from the hip then so be it but the story you should always think about the story now it's exciting when you first get into a sighting but at some stage you've got to sit back and just think about how you're going to approach it and once you've got those first shoot from the hip get your adrenaline out of your system then you can start planning and thinking what the next shot is going to be um, obviously I could sit here for a while with these guys but if they start moving there's an open area in front um, very likely there'll be things like wildebeest or maybe even giraffe there's been a couple of giraffe on there uh, the last few days so there's there's quite a bit of stuff to choose from um, and maybe there'll be a hunt so then I have to start thinking about how I'm going to shoot it without impacting the hunt or impacting the lion so there's all these different aspects you have to take into into account number one rule is we are not to change the behavior of the animals in order to shoot our, our photos we are here to document what they're doing so always the animal comes first and um, they have a hard enough time doing their stuff on their own anyway so we might as well share that that thing and one of the things that i've learned uh, through my time out here is if you show an animal respect, they will show you the most incredible things. All right, so the lions are looking a bit more active now. There's some yawning going on. I'm nice and low again. This is my, my one thing that I absolutely love is to be low and be really out of the, to be at an angle where it feels like for the viewer like I'm on the ground really low feels like I've got it out of my car but as you can see I'm safely in my car otherwise there is detriment that could be caused by these big creatures that are sitting watching me here 
All right, so one of the females has got a head up. She's about to yawn. Yes, please. Right, so the light has evened out a lot because the sun's popped in behind something. Um, we really have a nice view of what's going on now. But I have a feeling that these lines are going to get moving shortly. Um, the, the females have started yawning, started um, grooming themselves, and this is an important part of the I'm about to get moving stage. Let's see what it looks like in portrait. Oh, it's very pretty. The sky in the background is very pretty. So maybe if she looks up, we'll be able to get something really cool from that. So because i've got the stability of this i don't need to be looking through my viewfinder i also don't have mad reflections so sometimes i'll use the back screen which is a nice way to see what's happening there you can see the lioness there um but for the most part i will stick to using my using the eyepiece especially when or obviously hand holder hand holding is important especially with something with a lens as big as this There's a beautiful tree in the background and because of the soft focus of being a 2.8, it's giving me a really nice feel to the image. And the light in the background is beautiful too because it's the soft blue and a bit of orange coming through as the sun's softening and setting in the distance there. Really nice. So I've set her up at the bottom. I've got all of the softening all the way back. It gives you the idea. The big tree in the background gives a, a sense of Africa and that uh, almost looks like an umbrella thorn. Even though it's a marula tree, it gives you that sense. So. Okay, cool. That was fun. I really hope you guys got a lot of cool information out of that. Please be sure to send any questions that you have to me on social media that I can interact with you and we can chat through the different things or questions that you might have for this. Now, we've obviously just covered lions elephants and impala in next week's episode in episode three we are going to be looking at hyena and there was an amazing sighting where we had hyenas on a carcass that had died a rhino that had died and it was quite a spectacular sighting in its own thing what had happened to the rhino was there were complications in childbirth and the gut had actually got twisted and she unfortunately died because of this uh, complication. Her calf was then picked up and moved off to a rehabilitation center and a full autopsy was done to ensure that it wasn't any foul play involved. But it created an incredible sighting where we had about 20 hyena fighting over this carcass, probably 50 to 100 vultures in and around us in the trees doing their thing making a noise it was an incredible sighting with a lot of very different photographic opportunities so i hope you'll join me for that also in the next episode we will also talk about hippopotamus and how to photograph these crazy great creatures who live in a flat waterbed and we will also talk about zebra these striped beautiful stripy horses wearing pajamas love them to bits and we will get down into how to create the images and how to work them. The other episodes will go into cheetah, we'll look at leopard, we will look at uh, rhino and buffalo in the other two episodes that follow the next one. And these will all give us indications. And in the last, the sixth episode of this, I will go deep down into my Lightroom techniques and how I photograph in Lightroom. Just remember that there is a promo code WILDRICHARD02 if you want to get a 10% discount off of your next Sony purchase. You will take, you will buy your, buy whatever you want from the, from the Sony side besides a few items which are listed on cashbacks.co.za and that is the same place that you will claim back your 10% discount on these things. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a lot of questions and you've learned a lot today. And please, again, if you have any questions, send them through. I look forward to interacting with you. Have a wonderful day. Cheers. Bye. Bye.